So you explored the problem of projection from two different standpoints. Last time, when you looked at parts A and B, you created projection, you constituted it as a calculus problem, an optimization problem. How do we use the Euclidean distance formula to determine a function which tells us how far away points on our subspace S are from the point we're trying to project, and then use calculus to find the minimum point of that function, which will thereby be what we call the projection. Right? So you did that part. You treated it as a calculus problem last time. You found the coordinates of the point which you got by projecting B onto S last time. This time, I walk you through a different set of steps which involve no calculus whatsoever. Find a matrix A whose column space is exactly S, the subspace you're projecting onto. Um, that was part C. Part D is to show that the matrix equation AX equals B does not have a solution. It's an inconsistent system. And yet, if we multiply both sides of that equation by A transpose on the left, that new equation, and just in the parlance of our course, what we call this equation, we call it the normal equation. I love that the word normal gets used for like 800 different things in mathematics. Um, this is one of them. <laughs> Even though AX equals B is not solvable, A transpose, multiply both sides of that equation, that new equation is solvable. And so you solved it. You ended up getting just a single variable equation whose solution was a single number, right, of a point in the real line. Um, but then here's the tricky part. Uh, and this is what I was talking to, to some of your groups about as I was walking around, which is, OK, we get a solution from this normal equation. In your case, that solution is just a single number. My question is, what relationship does that single number have to the point, which is the projection of B onto S? So what did you come up with? Some group wanted to give me your 30-second you know, elevator speech of where you ended up after doing this set of problems. So what did you do? So we might consider this to be kind of a step-by-step -step for how to find a projection matrix. We want this to be a two-by-two two matrix because it's going to take a point in the xy plane and produce for us another point in the xy plane. Um, and the result of multiplying by that two-by-two two matrix should be to take any point and find the projection of that point onto our subspace. So the first thing I had you do um, was to take the subspace that you're given, the subspace you want to project onto, and define a matrix, A, whose column space is exactly that matrix. So in our example that I've been working on repeatedly in class, we have y equals minus 2x. And so the matrix I could use for that should have, as the span of its columns, should be the set S, the line y equals minus 2x. So since that's a one-dimensional set, if I pick any non-zero vector inside of it, then I can use that non-zero vector as the column of my matrix. So maybe I'll choose negative 3, 6, just for fun. So I'm going to make that my matrix. And the job after that was to observe that we cannot solve the equation AX equals B, the reason being that any X that I pick, if I multiply this matrix by it, what I'm going to get is I'm going to get a point along this line, along the column space. Right? All of my AXs are going to lie here. Right? None of them are going to actually get me to B. It's just not possible. And yet, when I multiply both sides of that equation by A transpose to get the normal equation for this AX equals B, it is something that I can solve. But the X that I get is itself not the projection. Because the x that we get is going to be a single real number back here in the domain of our linear transformation defined by the matrix A. What we want is its corresponding point in the range of this linear transformation. x itself is not the projection. But as team 4 observed, ax is. Right? So if you found a value of x by solving the normal equation, so I'm going to do that for our example here. Um, a transpose AX is going to give me negative 3, 6 times negative 3, 6 times X. Multiplying these matrices across the row and down the column, I'll get 9 plus 36. That's 45, I hope. So I'll get 45X equals A transpose B. That's negative 3, 6 times B. Here I've chosen 7, negative 4 as the point I'd like to project. Multiply that across the row and down the column. Negative 21 minus 24, that's negative 45. So I actually get kind of nice numbers to work with here. 
And so when I solve that, I get x equals negative 1. OK, great. But what some of your groups noticed is that the x that you got here was exactly the same as the x-coordinate of the projected point that you got. And I was trying to tell you that that was a coincidence as I walked around, um, because some of your groups didn't. In our example, if I look at the point on my graph where x is equal to negative 1, I would end up over here somewhere, right? Uh, right here, x equals negative 1, question mark, question mark. Clearly, that's not my projection. It's not the x-coordinate of the projection that I'm looking for. So what, in fact, is the relationship between that x and the projection that we want? What do I have to do to turn that number, negative 1, into the point, which is the projection, onto s? What's the last step? Multiplied by a. Multiplied by a, exactly. So the negative 1 that I found was a number in the domain of this linear transformation. What I want is the number, the vector, sorry, the point that that number corresponds to in the range of my linear transformation. So to find it, I just have to multiply a times x. That's going to give me the point 3, negative 6. And sure enough, that is the coordinate of my point. So what I want to do is to wrap all of this up and figure out what this all means. What I invite you to do in Part E, and a couple of your groups got this far, a couple didn't, and that's all right, um, was to make a conjecture. How do you find a matrix, a 2 by 2 matrix, which accomplishes this projection, which can take me directly from my point 7, negative 4, and produce for me my projection, in this case, 3, negative 6? How do we do it? And we can do it, I say, by making the following observation, that whatever that matrix is, P, it has to have the property that when I multiply that matrix by B, the thing I'm trying to project, the result is supposed to give me the projection, which we also know by the other name, A times X. So I want to know what matrix P has the property that PB is equal to AX. But then we can figure this out since we know where our X comes from. Our X comes from the solution of this normal equation over here. So one five-minute task that I want to give your groups, which is to find a formula for P using the, the two pieces of information we have up here, the two things in the boxes. First of all, that PB is equal to AX, and second, that A transpose AX is equal to A transpose B. So find a formula for P in terms of A. If we can find that, then we really have closed the book on this question. It tells you the projection matrix. So what, what formula then gives us the projection matrix if we know that AX is equal to PB, right, defines what P is, but that also X is a solution to the normal equation. A transpose AX is equal to A transpose B. So what does that, first of all, make X? If you solve this normal equation for X, what did you end up with? Okay. Great. So when you solve this equation for x, you have to take a little bit of a leap of faith, one that we haven't talked about. That leap of faith is that A transpose A is an invertible matrix. By the way, this is not always true for reasons that we'll see a little bit later on. Um, but for now, let's make that leap of faith. Certainly in the example that you did that was specific in part D, you ended up dividing by a number that you obtained by doing A transpose A. Right? And that number was non-zero, and so you could divide by it. Um, we have to try a little bit harder later on to justify why we know that this can be inverted. Um, but for now, we'll just take it on faith. So if that's what x is, according to the normal equation, then what does ax equals pb then turn into? A transpose A transpose B is equal to PB. All right, so you end up with this equation. Um, and then what does that tell you? That B equals A times A transpose A inverse. Yeah. Um, let me ask one of these annoying abstract questions. Um, are we dividing by B here to go from that step to that step? No. no. Why, why not? Why, is, why are we not dividing by B? 
Right. So because B is a matrix, or in general, it's a, it's a column vector. It's a point in Rn, in this case, R2. Um, and yeah, division is not something that we know necessarily means anything. Right? That would be like admitting that this vector has a multiplicative inverse, which it probably doesn't. Um, so we're not really dividing by B. But what we're doing, as I was talking with Team 5 about briefly, um, we're, we're using a fact from linear algebra, which is this, that if this equation is true for all Bs in R2, in other words, the abstract version of this might be something like the following. If I have two matrices, M and N, and if it's true that MX is equal to NX for all X in the domain, then the two matrices must be the same. This is a fact that if you didn't prove it in linear algebra, when you took linear algebra, you should think a moment for about, about why that's true. Right? Why is it not possible um, to have two matrices that are different, yet have the same effect on every vector inside of the domain? But if we believe that, we might think of it as a cancellation property from abstract algebra, then we get the formula in the box, which is now a recipe for how to determine a projection matrix. All we have to do is, first of all, find a matrix whose column space is exactly the subspace we're trying to project onto. That's what we're calling A here. Then the normal equations will tell us an x, which has the effect of multiplying, once we multiply it by A, gives us the projection. And therefore, the projection matrix, we can just skip straight to the answer here, can be built out of the formula A times the inverse of A transpose A times A transpose. One of the things that we can be certain about is that A transpose A will always be a square matrix. Right? Um, that's, a transpose A is going to play a large role in this course, so we're going to say a lot more about it uh, later on. But if A, for example, is n by m, then A transpose has what dimensions? m by n. So if I were to multiply these two together, what dimensions would their product have? m by m. So no matter what the dimensions of A happen to be, A transpose A will always at least be a square matrix. Why it's an invertible square matrix actually depends on how we choose the matrix whose column space is S. As long as its columns of A are linearly independent, it turns out, then A transpose A will be invertible. But that's a big statement for you to swallow, and I um, don't expect you to, so we'll talk more about that later on. So this provides the overview of how to make projection onto a subspace into a linear algebra problem instead of a calculus problem. All we can do is build a matrix, and by just doing these matrix operations out, you will build a matrix that achieves the projection of any point in R2 onto the subspace S, which is the column space of A.